Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for taking part in the Mass Society Convention. My name is Nikola Lebedev. I'm a PhD student from Moscow State University, Russia. And today I'm going to tell you about some application of electromagnetism that might be useful for space exploration, uh, for launches, um, including railgun and coal gun concepts. So why electromagnetism? Um, at the moment, the majority of the engines that accelerate the spaceships are chemical. Mm, that actually makes sense. <laughs> because um, chemical fuel has good values of thrust and um, effective exhaust velocity. And the processes uh, inside I will, uh, I will study. Um, also, the acceleration of the rocket is close to G, so it can be used to transport the humans uh, on the orbit. Um, that's why there is a big chance that very soon we will see the first successful interplanetary flight of the Starship hopefully, and the reduction of the cost uh, of a one kilo transported to the low Earth orbit. Um, so the cost feature is for fuel rockets. But it's clear that if we want to reduce the cost of one kilo to uh, Earth orbit, if we want to build an orbital spaceport, uh, the cities on Mars and Moon, um, we should start thinking of other variants of the alternatives to the chemical fuel uh, right now. Mm. Uh, because the mm, minus of the chemical fuel is that um, it allows only five, about 5% five of the payload of the ship. And that's not much if we want to uh, send tons of materials and good, goods to space. Um, an alternative concept for accelerate, uh, accelerating the spaceship is an ion thruster, but uh, this is a rather good variant for satellites, uh, for maneuvers, for maneuvers in space, uh, as it can work for years. But the thrust is too small for planetary starts and uh, manned missions. Um, so there are a lot of other concepts um, we can think about, uh, like uh, like space gun, like a uh, spin launch concept. Each of them has their drawbacks and advantages, but um, we should think um, how can we use physical laws, laws for our goals. Um, so I believe in electromagnetism uh, as it is both pretty well investigated and we have um, all the technologies that we need to build a huge electromagnetic gun. And the sources of energy are very available. Also, the electricity doesn't cost much. Um, one important point is that uh, is the interest from uh, military uh, sources. So the railgun technology was chosen by um, military forces to become a weapon of the future. So this era of applied physics is developing pretty fast. And I hope we can use this too. Uh, it will be very useful for the planets uh, with thin atmosphere and low gravitation, such as Mars. So basically, how can we use electromagnetism for accelerating? There are several concepts for that, but the most perspective ones are railgun and coilgun. Um, here is a railgun. So basically, it's just a pair of two wires uh, with a conductive bridge between them that can move along the wires. Um, central axis if the voltage is applied to the wires and the current flows through the bridge. Um, and if it has an initial velocity, which is important. Um, so the bridge will be accelerated by the Lorentz force, um, which uh, accelerates the conducting bridge in the magnetic field from the wires. Um, okay, um, so here is the Colgan concept. Um, so basically, it's a coal connected with an impulse current source. Uh, when the current flows in the coal, the, this leads to creation of um, the <clears throat> magnetic field. Mm. And uh, the magnetic projectile uh, is sucked in inside the coil. 
So uh, this leads um, to the high acceleration of the project. Um, in the center of the call, the field should be uh, dropped to zero um, in order not to slow down the projectile after reaching the center of the coil. So the physics here seem to be very simple, but the engineer, uh, engineering of such devices is much more complex. You need a really a powerful current or voltage source that can produce a um, short impulse of current. Usually a big assembly of capacitors is used to produce an intense and short, and short impulse to perform uh, high acceleration rates. Uh, this huge capacitor assembly is um, um, charged by DC power source to high voltages. Uh, and the impulse of voltage from them should be not only short, but long enough not to burn or melt your project. Uh, the railgun design is more perspective for combat um, usage. <clears throat> and uh, the coal gun design is used for a popular DIY devices um, as it is easier to construct. Uh, the efficiency of railgun is about 30% and uh, while the coal gun is only several percent uh, for one coil and uh, about 25% for a multi-coil multi design. Uh, so mostly the efficiency is reduced by the air and constructive friction and by ohmic losses in other mediums. Um, also a significant part of the electromagnetic energy stays in the inductive elements of the construction. When we get to the extreme voltages and powers, um, there are other effects that uh, matter. For example, the pressure on the rails, um, in the rail gun becomes significant. So we should take this into account. Uh, so the rail gun design seems more perspective for the uh, for a launcher from the. <clears throat> but I like the cool gun design also, um, as it promises a lot of interesting ideas. Uh, and modifications based on electromagnetic principles. Um, so, first of all, uh, the efficiency of the device uh, can be increased if we use the ferromagnetic materials in the construction of the projectile. Uh, that's, um, so the ferromagnetic material has a big value of the relative permeability which means the um, magnetic flux density increases linearly in it, um, which increases the force that pushes the projectile. Uh, that's why they usually use nails in the, as the ammo for the coal gun. Uh, the ferromagnetic and the coal will interact like two permanent magnets. Uh, we can assume that the coal has a north and a south pole, so, um, the same poles will be attracted and different will be pushed away. <clears throat> uh, that's why each coil uh, works only on one half. As after passing the middle of the coil, the current should be dropped to zero in order not to slow down the projectile, which, uh, uh, which start to be attracted back. Um, so <clears throat> uh, that's why um, we can construct a sequence of calls to increase the acceleration rate. The control of the electric impulses uh, on the coils can be provided with a microcontroller which uses the signals from the photo detectors uh, that detect a projectile position. Um, so we can construct um, such a device. Um, uh, and what's more, we, if we use a permanent magnet uh, as a projectile, we can make the whole coil work, um, not only half of it, but the whole. Well, if we reverse the current in the uh, in it after passing the center, um, it will start to accelerate the projectile. Um, also, to save electromagnetic energy of the coil, uh, we should somehow store it to increase its efficiency. That can be done in the following way: um, as the electromagnetic energy of coal is spent on the kinetic energy um, of the projectile we launch. Uh, the energy of the incoming, for example, from Mars, um, accelerated projectile can be turned uh, to electromagnetic energy. Uh, so if the projectile is permanently magnetized, it will produce an impulse of current uh, in the coal when passing it, uh, which can be used for charging. Uh, this is basically what's called an electromagnetic induction. 
Um, okay, so another exciting technology that can be used in tandem with coils is a superconductive magnet, which is basically the coil tool. Um, superconductivity is a phenomenon which uh, occurs in some metals and alloys <clears throat> in helium temperatures, uh, about uh, 4 Kelvin. So the resistance of these metals drops to zero and the current can leave in metal almost as long as uh, you wish, as the electrons inside do not face any scattering. So the, um, uh, if we use a coil, this current will produce a constant magnetic flux um, that can be freezed inside the coal. Um, this is cool because, because we can store the energy for years and then uh, release it fast if we connect the coal to a resistive um, element. <clears throat> uh, this technology is called uh, superconducting magnetic energy storage. Um, and the prototypes built uh, show a high power density, high efficiency, and can carry from kilojoules to gigajoules of electromagnetic energy. Um, the fastest way that we can actually release the energy of the superconducting magnet is to quench it. Uh, this occurs when the superconductive uh, coil turns to nor normal resistive and uh, the resistive, um, when a superconductive coil uh, turns to uh, uh, normal resistive regime and um, <clears throat> the resistance jumps up. Um, this is a way to create a strong electromagnetic impulse. Uh, so the coolest for all these technologies is the fact that the temperature in space is even uh, lower than 4 Kelvin and uh, so uh, we can use the superconductors without any complicated uh, cross states which limit the use of them on Earth. For example, there is an idea called the superconducting slingshot. Um, so we take a big enough coal gun system on the orbit and consider a short superconducting solenoid, which is free uh, to slide inside a long one, like here. Um, um, so the traveling solenoid will be either attracted uh, to or repelled from the center of the land solenoid, depending on the direction of relative magnetization. Um, actually, either con configuration can serve as an electromagnetic slingshot. Um, by uh, here on the picture, we have an attractive con configuration. Uh, the traveling solenoid can serve as a payload carrying shuttle bucket. Uh, released at the breech end of the barrel coil, um, it will accelerate to the center where it will release its payload at maximum velocity, uh, come to rest at the muzzle and then uh, return empty um, to a position short of its release point uh, from where it can be returned to the release point by mechanical force, possibly by a thermal cycle. And this oscillation is inherently lossless. So except for possible eddy currents induced in nearby metal. Um, another idea is to successfully um, quench a line of adjacent coaxial superconducting coils uh, forming a gun barrel to generate a wave of magnetic field uh, gradient traveling at um, any desired speed. A uh, traveling superconducting coil can be made to ride this wave like a servo. <clears throat> so um, let's move from basics to a particular design. Uh, the rail gun is a more practical thing for earth conditions, uh, as we see. So there is a concept suggested by uh, Ian McNabb, uh, how to launch a 100, uh, sorry, 1,250 uh, kilogram projectile to space using a rail gun with a final velocity of about eight kilometers uh, per second. The successful launch is estimated to cost about uh, 500 uh, dollars per kilogram, um, which is almost 10 times um, less than using chemicals, chemical fuel. <clears throat> um, and as the acceleration is going to be far beyond human limits, this concept can be used only for sturdy materials like food, uh, metals, water, uh, fuel. <clears throat> 
so the whole idea was described by uh, Ian S. Barry Chelson by may not be impossible. So let's take a closer look. Uh, the lunch should be situated as close to the equator as possible and uh, preferably into the mountain uh, at a height of several kilometers oriented east. Uh, the railgun uses distributed energy sources charged by a small power plant uh, with multiple high speed rotating electrical generators, which can be ready for launch in a couple of hours. The original field that uh, permeates the launcher bore is augmented by using pulsed external magnets in its uh, vicinity, like here. Mm, so the whole concept is uh, called UTSTAR. R. Um, and um, these saddleback augmenting magnets are distributed along the launcher to increase the magnetic field in the bore of the launcher only in the vicinity of the launch package. Uh, the augmented magnets produce a magnetic field similar in strength to that uh, produced by main current. Uh, this allows the rail current to be reduced while providing the accelerating force, which is advantageous for the power supply. Um, also, by reducing ohmic resistive losses, it increases the efficiency of the launch process. Uh, nevertheless, a high current of uh, 6 mega ampere is required. So the augmented magnets are only energized when the launch package is in the vicinity of the launch, uh, it, um, is the, in the vicinity of the uh, launch package. So that electrical energy is expanded to create the augmented field only when the launch package is nearby, sorry. Uh, rather than uh, filling the entire launch, uh, launch bore with a magnetic field like it's done in uh, military um, rail guns. The magnets are energized sequentially at a rate corresponding to the projectile velocity so that the traveling wave is created that envelops the armature as it, uh, armature as it accelerates along the launch. Um, this distributed uh, feed arrangement also ensures that minimum magnetic energy is left in the barrel at projectile launch. Um, so a further advantage is that the multiple feeds bear, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry, um, a further advantage is that the multiple feeds um, arranged along the launcher will provide a distributed power input. Uh, this ensures increased efficiency compared with military rail guns because the resistive loss associated with current transfer along the rails from the power leads to the uh, amateur will be reduced. And here the acceleration was limited to a modest value of uh, 2000 Gs by using a barrel length of 1600 meters. So this is the length of the whole section. Um, the cost of this long barrel and its associated infrastructure will be offset by the easier operation conditions and uh, the reduced need for maintenance. Uh, although the optimum choices depend on a more uh, detailed economical evaluation. So the operating risks will also be reduced compared with ordnance applications by uh, using a modest rail current density of 6 uh, kilo amperes per millimeter. This is uh, about 15% of the value used for military barrels, uh, thereby reducing heating and stresses in the barrel. Um, so, and the high efficiency can be achieved with a long UTS uh, TAR system since energy is fed into each stage only when the projectile is present there. Uh, so, 80% was assumed uh, in this article, and even higher values may be possible. Um, so, thus, for a muzzle energy of 35 uh, gigajoule. Uh, which is enough to uh, take about one ton to um, accelerate about one ton to eight kilometers per second. The input energy per launch would be about 44 uh, gigajoule. At launch, the projectile will be injected into the launcher bridge at a uh, few 100 meters per second, because remember, uh, the projectile should have an initial velocity. Um, not to burn, uh, not to be melted. <clears throat> uh, 
and uh, nearby magnets will be energized. Simultaneously, a pulse of high current fed to the rails will initiate the rail gun acceleration process. Uh, as the launch package accelerates, the breach magnets will be powered down and magnets further down the launcher will be sequentially energized with current impulses um, that attempt to maintain special uh, synchron synchronicity with the accelerating project. Uh, similarly, current will be fed into each section of the launcher from the pulsed power supplies that are distributed along the launcher. Uh, the launch velocity will be optimized for the vehicle characteristics. Uh, so a projectile which weighs one ton and is six meter long is pushed forward by a metal blade, like is shown here. Um, <clears throat> uh, after the launch, a sequence of events will lead to the successive disposal of most of the launch package components. Uh, until only the um, slender low drag shape stable Radman cone um, aerosol structure will remain to transit the atmosphere and reach orbit. Um, this will minimize the energy uh, required by the orbit changing rocket motor, which also presents here, uh, thereby maximizing the payload fraction. The most critical concern during this phase of the flight is the aerothermal heating of the nose tip, which will be very extreme as these launch velocities, even though uh, this, <clears throat> so the launch velocities, uh, while the flight body will be passing the atmosphere, uh, uh, will get the nose tip um, uh, to the temperature of uh, several thousand degrees, so we uh, will have to use the coolant for it. Uh, having trans uh, transited the sensible atmosphere, the NOSIP and any of its remaining coolant plus the coolant control system may be safely mm, jet jettisonized, uh, together with the error shell and much of the remaining structure. Um, <clears throat> so the remaining components uh, this should be the payload and rocket motors and controls will continue on a ballistic trajectory to the apogee of the orbit that can be achieved based on the initial launch velocity. And at the apogee, uh, the larger rocket motor will be fired to increase the payload to the orbital velocity at that altitude. Um, so the tables show the parameters of the project and its estimated costs. Um, as you can see, the budget is not that huge. The budget of the Big Adron Collider is about 6 billion euro to compare, not taking into account uh, the infrastructure that already existed. Um, so the same concept can be used to build a moon or Mars-based railgun with less difficulties, such as aerodynamic drag and the gravitation. Um, okay, so also, an orbital call gun concept can be used as an additional station for accelerating payloads uh, from low orbit to other planets um, to accelerate the payloads from eight kilometers per second to 11 kilometers per second. Uh, um, I used the call gun design uh, as it is promising for using the superconductive technology listed above and can reuse part of the energy from the launch. Um, so as the aerodynamic drag is negligible, this design will use a reduced length of the coil, only about 100 meter length. Uh, the power can be stored in a superconducting magnet energy storage uh, here. <clears throat> uh, the main coil will consist of several coils activated uh, successfully. Um, the coil can also use the cargo capsules coming from Mars to charge the uh, supermagnetic uh, energy storage. If the incoming capsule is uh, magnetized, it will generate a peak of current passing the main coil. And if the de-energized uh, supermagnetic uh, energy storage uh, is short circuited to warning. the yeah is short circuited to the coil, uh, it is peak current value. This value will be stored in it. So the only problem is not to let the um, uh, the storage to quench. <clears throat> and the impulse gained after launch can be neglected by additional thrusters that can be chemical or iron. Uh, so the um, orbital call gun can also use the principle of the superconducting slingshot mentioned above, operating uh, 
with constant current. Then the energy losses will be spent only for moving the inner coil. And this is significant as one of the drawbacks of a previous coal gun orbital station is the need of, for a powerful DC source to charge the, uh, the reactor, which can be used only in the slingshot design. And superconductive coils can store the current for years. So hopefully with the appearance of the thermonuclear reactors, we'll get a compact and powerful generator for charging the, uh, the superconducting magnetic storage um, or any other current impulse generator. Also a state-to-art navigational system will uh, be needed to successfully conduct their projectiles through the coil. So um, as we see, almost every technology that is needed to, for the successful operation of the coal guns and rail guns already exist. We just need to make more effort to solve engineer problems. And again, this is not much a question of money as interest in the area, because physicists can spend billions on their projects like uh, Big Andron Collider or um, uh, International uh, Thermonuclear Reactor, because they have a strong international community with good financing. Um, so, Space projects tend to be less international oriented with a few exceptions like International Space Station or some scientific missions. So this is said, and I really enjoy the idea of making the launch projects a more international case. Uh, so as Elon said yesterday, let's make space and Mars something that everyone is talking about. Uh, okay, thank you for attention. And if you are interested, I had one more talk on the 15th about military technologies in Mars exploration. You can check, check it out um, if, you, if you are interested. Um, it shall appear on YouTube soon. Thank you. Great, thank you. There are some questions down here in chat. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. Do you wanna go ahead and just read those or do you want me to go through and read them for you? Mm. Yeah, I can read them. Okay. So what are, th what are thoughts on the Lovstrom launch loop? Uh, so the Lovstrom launch loop is the concept of using the uh, rail gun, the spiral rail gun, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Uh, but this is, I think this is a really huge, um, the monumental project and uh, it should be more than $30 billion. I was trying to <clears throat> uh, take a look of the project that is uh, potentially, uh, that potentially can be done with our technologies and our budget. I mean, our uh, international budget. You know, it's hard times like coronavirus. Uh, okay, if you use a muzzle loaded projectile or if the projectile becomes stopped and falls backward down the barrel, how do you plan to handle the induced force as well and slow from the ferromagnetic object going the wrong way? Um, yeah, that's a good question. <clears throat> uh, this is one of the engineer's uh, difficulties that I was talking before. Uh, and uh, so difficulties like this should be served. Uh, um, Difficulties like this um, um, should be solved during the um, uh, design of the gun if it uh, will be successful. So, but I think that um, the lens law uh, um, will cause the ferromagnetic uh, object uh, not to leave the barrel. Yes, but the electromagnetic impulse is, may, uh, is um, um, formed in such a way that uh, it minimizes the, these forces. So yes, but if projectile somehow becomes stopped in the barrel, we should uh, not to let this happen. Uh, just by using the proper um, <clears throat> uh, proper devices. Okay, thank you. Um, it is time for the next session. Now this uh, session will be open for another 15 minutes, but um, just wanna let everyone know that the next sessions will be starting here momentarily. So if you wanna continue asking questions, that's fine. Uh, I'll leave the, the Zoom call open. 
Um, for those of you that are leaving, um, thank you very much for your time and we hope to see you in some of the later sessions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you can unmute your microphones and just ask me, it will be easier probably. So, okay, uh, here's the question about uh, limiting the acceleration to less than, uh, to a small amount of Gs. Um, I think this design doesn't work for a small amount of Gs, unfortunately. We'll have to use, still use the chemical fuel. Um, but uh, because you understand that the, you'll have to build really long, um, a really long barrel. <clears throat> I've seen another design called uh, Space Tram, um, which uh, the barrel of the Space Tram, uh, it uses the um, effect of superconductive levitation. And um, the barrel is about 200 kilometers long. This is a lot. So let's build uh, at least two kilometer electromagnetic gun and try to do something with it. Mm. Yes, uh, so um, Navy rail guns use three million amperes for shot. Uh, the plant 64 uh, megajoule system uses six million amperes for shot. This is, uh, so you see that um, these values are used in military already, so we can use them for such a concept. Uh, how will we develop these power levels in space without unacceptable mass penalties? Yes, this is a good question, but you will not have to, you, uh, to generate such a high impulse of, um, of current because as I said, in space you have less aerodynamic drag and um, also you can use uh, superconducting uh, technologies. Um, so uh, you can use, for example, you can bring a spaceship with a huge, um, with a huge reactor or any current source on the board, uh, charge the um, superconducting coil. And after that, if you use the concept of uh, superconducting slingshot, uh, this current will stay in the coil for years. You don't have to use any additional current. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is to move the inside coal from the center of the previous coal. Um, to, uh, you'll have to use some energy for that. The maximum velocity that has ever been achieved with the coal gun is about 500 meters per second, despite significant funding. In fact, most laboratory coal guns become drag devices slowing down the armature uh, via armature capture once the project velocity exceeds 200 meters uh, per second. Okay, um, yes, uh, that is what I was talking uh, about. Uh, the um, effects of the induction, the induction effects that stay in the coil uh, when the projectile is leaving it. Uh, we should minimize these effects and um, as I suggested, it can be done by some, um, so some of the variants I mentioned. Uh, but I like the superconducting sink shot, uh, probably it's the best solution. <clears throat> mm, because uh, it minimizes the induction effects. The only thing you have to uh, be careful about is not to quench your, um, your superconductive coils because uh, the vacuum is a, is a thermal insulator and uh, you don't have any um, source of, uh, um, so you don't have a vessel where you can um, throw your, um, uh, throw your energy from the um, heat. Um, that's why it's a problem. The superconductive coils can be quenched and turned to a normal state. Okay, how do you propose to instantaneously reverse the current in the non-superconducting 
um, well done concept uh, as the project all th uh, passes through the coil. Um, so if you know the damped uh, oscillator, um, we can use such parameters uh, of the inductance and capacity that uh, the current will oscillate like uh, in a sinusoidal way with exponential decay. So we just uh, take this uh, um, concept to reverse the current. For the superconducting coal, have you examined the energy dissipated into the coal when the superconductivity is quenched? This would appear to be a good way to destroy the superconductor. Unfortunately, yes, because uh, this is a weak point here. Uh, we have to think about some, as I said, some vessel uh, where we can um, put the energy of the heat from the uh, from the magnet. But some superconducting magnets are designed to quench. Actually, uh, I've read about some constructions using the um, epoxides. Epoxide, probably yes. Um, and actually, I worked with one of them. Uh, this magnet can be quenched, but it's still not very good for for it. Uh, Assuming this works, it seems to lack flexibility, always the same inclination. Would there be customers for that? Mm. I think yes, uh, because the uh, cities on Mars, on the moon, will always need a basic, uh, uh, basic materials like wood, metal, fuel, uh, in big amounts. So we can use this um, concept uh, of the railgun to just to minimize the costs of sending this uh, um, not very expensive goods to space and uh, send more expensive goods with uh, fuel rockets. Okay, Navi has hit. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can uh, just ask me personally. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Sorry if I had to talk fast because I had a really big amount of information uh, in a short time, so I try to be as fast as I can. Yeah, I hope very much for international um, cooperation in this field because it should be an international project like uh, international thermonuclear reactor. Um, then it can be easily, um, we can find funds for that more easily. I don't know why it isn't yet. Um, so probably the, not so much interest in this era because we don't have yet any colonies in space so we don't have to launch like tons of things to space but soon we will need to so i think it's time to to engineer to design and to build such a, at least a prototype Because if you know the spin launch, um, spin launch project, um, uh, this is uh, <clears throat> so. Um, I hope the guys will succeed. But uh, anyway, they have a lot of uh, difficulties too, and uh, still, uh, this is a commercial project and. Uh, I think this project uh, can be done internationally or um, if there is such a project as spin launch, then why there couldn't be such a project as uh, electromagnetic railgun launch. Um, All right, well, thank you very much. That was uh, very informative, a bit over my head, but uh, I'm glad we had a lot of good questions.
Uh, do you have any more comments or any last questions before we wrap things up? Well, I think SpaceX um, it is more, uh, they have more uh, a narrower um, field um, and they had a lot of, uh, well, they are developing the Starship and that's their main goal. And uh, I think uh, there should be a, um, another company that, uh, I mean, uh, we can ask Elon probably about this concept, what he thinks about it, but it should be another company with uh, engineers thinking about this uh, separately because it is very different from the um, from the goals that uh, um, uh, that SpaceX engineers face. Yes. Okay, so yeah, uh, if we finished, All then right. probably it's over. Well, thank you yeah. very much. And uh, we will see you guys at some of the later sessions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.